Hi everyone, this is Diary of a Mystic. Welcome to One Bad Tarot Reader Podcast 7. Lucky number 7. In today's podcast, I want to speak about how do you know if you are a good tarot reader? So thank you to the ones that tune into this podcast. I really appreciate it. This is a podcast coming from my perspective as a tarot reader. I've been studying the tarot since 1993. I taught myself. This is pre-internet, pre-YouTube. How did I teach myself? Books, practice, and I was obsessed. (laughs) So if you're a reader yourself, if you're becoming a reader, if you're a seasoned reader, thank you for listening. If you don't read the cards, you just like to listen. Thank you for listening as well. So how do you know if you become, or how do you know when you become, or if you are a good tarot reader, meaning accurate, okay? It's validation from the people, validation from others. It can also be through doing readings for yourself and seeing things come to fruition. But most importantly, the best validation is through others. This can be done in various ways. You don't have to be a professional reader to seek validation from clients. When I started to read, of course, I read for myself primarily. Back then, I was doing readings for myself primarily on or focused on a relationship in my life or what my future held. So I'm primarily a predictive reader. I was also using other forms of divination, but very much focused on uh, understanding, learning, and mastering the tarot cards. And so over time, I eventually met other people who were learning to read or were readers themselves, and we would read for each other. I remember I would sit in the parking lot at lunchtime with a friend of mine who was also a reader, and we would give each other readings at lunchtime. (laughs) I also went to see other readers uh, who read professionally. I wasn't even reading professionally at all, but I would seek out psychics or other readers. Um, Of course, they didn't know that I was learning to read myself, but I also gained experience from watching how they would read or perform. So the best way to find out, how do I know if I'm a good reader is validation from the people. If you do YouTube, that's also a great way to find out through validation of those that watch you, comment, and tune in. So doing public readings online has really garnered and given a lot of people an audience, attention, and validation, which is wonderful. So accuracy is something that people look for in readings. And accuracy is also something that people look for when they go to a psychic, when they get a reading done by a tear reader, a medium, palm reader, uh, whatever you're into, astrologist even, whatever you're into, is the accuracy, meaning picking up on specifics attached to a situation, person, and the outcome as well. So validation is key and helping a reader start to trust themselves with the message. Many times, and I've always said this, readers are divine messengers where the messenger, and it's coming from a place 
that I believe once you hone in on your psychic abilities and your skills, it's coming from a place that has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your ego. It has nothing to do with basically you. It's you're the vehicle extending yourself energetically to receive and download these messages that come through from spirit. And finding out if you are accurate is all about trusting the message. Trusting the message, no matter how off the wall it sounds to you, if it makes no sense to you at all, delivering the message and trusting the message. No reader psychic medium is 100% accurate and no reader should ever claim that they are because that's a clear sign of a fraud or someone who's fraudulent. No psychic medium tarot reader is 100% accurate. So the accuracy is important, but it's also important to the validation you get from the people, but also the validation you get from trusting your gift, trusting the message, but also trusting your gift. Okay, there's many times where I've sat down to do readings and I'm looking at the reading and I'm going, well, okay, I'm seeing this come up in the reading, but the client is telling me, no, 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 you know, well, I'm seeing this in the reading, so so something's going on here, no, no, and then I'll find out that, and sometimes this can be the case the client or the person you're reading for does not want to tell you everything, which they perfectly have that perfect right, okay? Or they're holding something back or they're hiding something. And a good reader will see that in a reading. Wait a second. Well, this is uh, showing me something else. Or let's say, for example, you see something in the reading that has to do with uh, a relationship that they once had that this person is coming through to you a bit different than what that person that you're reading for perceived them as. No, they weren't anything like that. Well, this is showing me that they were. So spirit has a way of confirming to other people the message that they want to convey, even if the other person may not want to uh, accept it, understand it, validate it, or even want to discuss it. So validation from the people is key, especially in gaining confidence as a reader, especially in gaining a a sense of value in your readings, and especially gaining a sense of worth as a reader as well. I've had situations where uh, testimonials will come in from clients and those testimonials are so precious to me unless they post them on my website or if I say, you know, do you mind if I share this? I never share a testimonial from someone without their permission because sometimes they just don't want that information to be put out there because you're dealing with people's private lives and there's a lot of serious things that they trust for you to hold in confidence and so the testimonials will come in from other people as well feedback is important asking the client if you have any questions or need clarification on something is very important to follow through with as well So validation is key, and it's all from other people. You will know if you're good from validation from other people. And the best platform to do this now, especially in the last 15 years, 
is through YouTube or online social media, Facebook, live readings, Instagram. Uh, there's other social media platforms. And it not only gives you great practice, but it also gives you validation. And doing readings online, especially live readings, a lot of readers do them on Facebook, do live readings. A lot of reading uh, readers do live readings on Instagram. They also do them on YouTube, live readings. It is really important because it gives you a lot of good practice, I feel. It can be nerve wracking at first. It gives you also an audience and people find you to build your client base or to have referrals or to have clients find you that perhaps you once had a couple of years ago and then they discover you again. So because of the gift of technology, Readers now are able to, especially during this pandemic, instead of having in-person readings, you're able to do them through online conferencing, Zoom, uh, whatever it is. You know, you don't have to necessarily meet with someone in person. Of course, the old-fashioned telephone. I do telephone readings because I prefer to do a telephone reading. Uh, I've done Skype readings in the past. I've done various ways of doing readings. So especially performing live readings, even if they're free, is very important for you to gain knowledge, experience, and also to strengthen and hone in on your psychic abilities. So when I come on and do live readings, and then let's say I have sessions when I come on and do live readings that I have four, five, six people, after a period of a couple of hours, that's enough for me because it can become draining, especially one after the other, but it's also strengthening my intuitive muscle because there could be days in between where I'm finished with my private readings for clients and I don't have readings to do and the couple of days go by and then I'm like, well, I'll hop on and do some live readings. It's, it's kind of like exercising or working out or working out your psychic or intuitive muscle because it is like a muscle to me. And the validation you get from other people can even wow the most seasoned reader, you know, it can even wow you and you'll be like, holy shit, you know, I was right on that or holy moly, I got that correct, you know, uh, and you amaze yourself. I remember a few years ago, uh, the validations that I was getting from clients as my practice picked up, and I was even uh, shocked and amazed at myself. So, and then you have those moments, of course, where uh, the reading was just all over the place, and you're confused, and you're not, the client's a little, like, lost, and you're like, what the hell's going on? Because you, it's important to get validation from others, but it's also important to have clear clarification from a client as well. So I don't read for certain subjects. Many readers or psychics will just read about anything, which is fine, but I've learned over time that I, I don't read for certain things. So, and I think that's important. I've discussed this before about terms and conditions or what you will read for or what you shouldn't read for. I think it's really important to set boundaries like that. It just is, you know, it's really, really important because if I was God or a prophet, uh, 
I, I really wouldn't be speaking to you right now, you know, and I'm not God. So sometimes people have these great expectations of wanting you to really uh, tell them life affirming uh, predictions. And so, for instance, I will not read for someone when it comes to the old, the old traditional questions. When will I get married? When will I have kids? Will I ever get married? Will I ever have kids? I feel like that's something that is uh, on a divine course and is set up by the divine or by God or however you want to phrase it. And I'm also very careful about reading for people that are pregnant or trying to get pregnant. Uh, that's a real delicate situation. And I really don't like to read for people when it comes to legal situations because I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> and I can't give you legal advice legally. So it's really important what you uh, read, read about and what you read for. And so over time, you gain that experience and that knowledge, and that's to your discretion. And there's a lot of, you know, gatekeepers out there that would tell you, oh, you know, do this or do that. It's really up to the reader themselves. So in terms of validation from the people, one of the best ways to do that is to read for people publicly, but to do general readings. So a general reading is a reading without a framed or specific question. If you perform general readings for people and they don't ask you anything and you tune in, you hone in on their present situation or a past situation, that gives you more leverage in terms of accuracy in gaining validation. So that's why I love to do general readings for people, especially live readings, because if you can pick up immediately on something that's going on with someone, that's giving you more credibility as well. And I just think, honestly, it's more fun. <laughs> it's more fun than someone, you know, uh, let's say for instance, in my private practice, having someone book a reading with me and then, you know, they have these specific questions that basically are a paragraph long and then you have to go back and, and kind of condense that paragraph into an actual question. I prefer a general reading. The best way to approach a reader if you're wanting to get a reading, don't give them a lot of background. Do not give the person a lot of background information. I don't even ask for birth dates in my readings because I don't need a birth date. I also don't attune astrology to the reading as well. Now, birth dates typically are asked for so the person that's reading can find out what sign you are, maybe look up some astrological attributes to your sign, that they can mix in with the reading. That's fine. I've had readings done like that, but I personally don't ask for birth dates because I don't need a birth date. There's no reason. Uh, Spirit will also have a way of giving you specific messages to give to the client that they weren't even expecting. And so you work in tandem or you work hand in hand with your spirit guides, your spiritual team, you can have more than one, and you work in tandem together. And so whatever pulls through you to the person you're reading for is the message that spirit wants to give to them. And sometimes spirit may relay a message to them that they need to relay to someone else through them. So they're also being used as a vehicle, as a messenger as well. And so there could be moments where you read for someone and you may see information or you may see things that you're kind of a little bit like, uh, I don't know if I should share this with them. Okay. 
or you're picking up on things that uh, could be a bit um, kind of touchy, a touchy subject to, to approach them with or to bring up. Because spirit has a way of showing you things that you necessarily don't want to see or that person doesn't want to perhaps visit or revisit. And so you really have to, and it's a delicate zone, to approach that area with sensitivity. Because a good reader will help navigate you through difficult situations, whatever the situation may be. You know, I've had people in the past ask me questions such as, when will I die? Or, of course, you know, what are my winning lottery numbers? I've been asked everything that's possibly, uh, and I'm sure other readers have too, off-the-wall questions or just kind of questions that you're just like, I can't answer that for you. And I certainly wouldn't tell you when you're going to die. <laughs> you know, so validation is key. Um, the best way to get that validation is to read for other people. And especially to put yourself out there, get out of your comfort zone and to read publicly online. Uh, I've done tons of free readings over the years. Uh, another good way is to do reading exchanges with other readers. Okay, reading exchange for free. I've done that with other readers. I've done that with seasoned readers and myself being a seasoned reader as an exchange with each other as well. So doing a reading exchange uh, is a wonderful way to get great feedback and validation, especially with a beginning reader as yourself or a seasoned reader or an intermediate reader, or wherever you are on your reading path. It's a great way to get validation is from another reader. That's probably the best way. But another, of course, better way is to get it from your clients or from people or from the people especially serving or being in service to them offering free readings. So over the course of time you will build up your confidence in your self-worth as a reader and when I say self-worth I mean there even me I have moments and doubts with my gifts sometimes because I don't walk around and roam the earth in this psychic bubble all day if I did that I wouldn't be able to freaking leave the house you know I have to shut it off and turn it off um, I'm very sensitive to other people very sensitive to other people's energy so you can't constantly walk around uh, with your psychic antenna up. It just drives you nuts. And if you're empath or empathic, you're very sensitive to other people as well. So building up your self-worth and your credibility is key as a reader or wanting to do this professionally. Because people can't see your gift, people are very quick to criticize it and to dismiss it because they can't see it, they can't feel it, they can't hold it. They don't see any evidence of it unless perhaps they get a reading from you, okay? Credibility, credibility is, is key. And knowing that you're a good reader also, building your confidence and your self-esteem through the use of the tools of divination, such as the tarot, or using or practicing other forms of divination is very helpful as well. Studying the runes, 
learning how to uh, do divination through bibliomancy, uh, using uh, the use of divination through dice, or it's called claromancy, uh, not just oracle cards. You know, there's other forms of divination that you can, of course, the pendulum. Uh, there's other forms of divination that you can, the Lenormand is something that I have a great interest in. Lenormand cards. Uh, so there's other forms of divination that you can practice and use, which also help to strengthen your psychic abilities. Your intuition, your psychic abilities, I feel that anybody can strengthen those abilities. I also feel many of those abilities come through after some form of trauma in people's lives. I also feel and sense that a lot of people are born with that gift. But many times these capabilities come through uh, from or through trauma or abusive situations, these abilities can strengthen themselves or be discovered as well. So how do you know if you're a good tarot reader? You have to practice. You also have to open yourself up to becoming comfortable with and confident enough to read for other people, whether it's your friends, your friends' friends, your co-workers, you know, your family, if you feel comfortable reading for your family. I've never read for my family. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to know. I already know too much. I really don't want to go there. I don't read for my family. <laughs> now, I've read for clients' families. I don't want to read for my family. <laughs> no, thank you. So, so over time, the validation you get from other people, but also the validation you get from spirit, from your spirit guides, from your spiritual team, whatever you call upon before each reading, okay? However, the messages are downloaded and given to you through a voice, through images, through a feeling, uh, what, however it comes through to you, strengthening that connection is very important because that connection doesn't go away and that connection is still with you to help navigate your own life aside from helping other people to navigate their own. And that connection can only be formed by strengthening it and using it on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Every day, I do some type of divination, whether it's posting something on Instagram, whether it's doing something for a client, whether it's doing something for myself. Every day. I do some type of uh, daily draw, card pull of the day, you know, even shaking the lucky eight ball, <laughs> whatever it is, and strengthening that connection strengthens your intuitive abilities and strengthens your intuitive muscle, your psychic muscle which helps guide you and helps navigate you through your life. Just as if you take a walk each day or you have a physical routine that you do or that you jog 10 miles a day or that you walk three miles a day or you take your lunch hour and you take your walk at lunch. You do it consistently every single day. Because you can ride that psychic bicycle and keep going and going and going. And you can, you know, not 
not ride that psychic bicycle for six months. You'll get back on it, and it might be a little shaky and wobbly at first, but it's always there. It never leaves. It never goes away. It's always there. And so, many times people may be afraid of their gift, or they may not be sure on using it in service to other people, to help other people. And that's another podcast in itself, because your gift is so precious. I believe that it's a gift from God. And many people don't want to share that with others because they don't want to have it attacked. They don't want to be criticized. They don't want to have any part of it to be um, torn apart or broken down. And that's another podcast in itself because I've had moments like that. Because to me it's very precious because it's a part of me. Even though I'm the messenger, it's a part of me as well. So this is one bad tear reader podcast number seven. We've done seven of these. How exciting for those that like to listen to this. Thank you very much. My patrons on Diary of a Mystic Patreon get first access to this podcast. If you'd like to become a patron, tears start at $5 per month. I'll leave the link below. Thank you so much for listening. Everyone stay safe out there, be blessed, and I'll speak to you soon.